<laughs> Hi everyone, it's Brandy. Hello, if you're action. on. Oh, action. Ash, or Logan just called action. Um, if you guys are on, come on and tell me you're watching. Um, I'm live here on the Dixie Bell page. So I'm Brandy with Brush by Brandy. And tonight I'm going to be showing you a piece that I'm working on, which is this beautiful mahogany buffet here. And we're going to be blending from grays into blues. Logan's going to be my assistant tonight. I'm not yeah. happy to be out here because I'm freezing. I've been painting all day. My hands are frozen. I'm cold. I want to go inside. Um, it's cold in my garage. My husband got my heater out. Um, but I'm not going to whine because I've seen, you know, Kristana out painting when it's snowing outside. So. Lynn says hi. Marianne says hi. Hi. Hi, guys. So usually when I show you guys um, a blending, I'm usually doing a second coat. So tonight I thought I'd show you guys from the base where it starts. And this is kind of um, conceptual. You guys will get to see it as it develops. Um, can you get up? It's well, Anne's in Minnesota, yeah. so we really can't complain. Hey, hey, you little movie star. <laughs> someone's Hello! Little, someone wants to steal my camera time. Um... So I have out all my Dixie Belle brushes because I'm going to be using several different colors. I'm not even quite sure what colors I'm going to use yet, but I just got out a whole bunch of my Dixie Belle brushes. Um, my favorite ones are my Dixie Belle minis, but I only have three of these so far. Um, in fact, these are wet because I've already used them. And then my other one is in the refrigerator because I used it on another piece today. So I'm going to use what I have available in my Dixie Belle brushes. Um, and let me show you my color range that I have out. Cindy says she grew up in Wyoming. <laughs> it's brutal out there. I know. I'm yeah. Wider. I'm totally in California. It's like 48 degrees. <laughs> I'm complaining because it's like 50. Yeah. So I, I can't, I won't even mind to you guys because I know people have it way worse than me, but I'm cold. Um, so the colors I have out, I have out like the full range of Dixie Belle dark blues and grays. So over here is Driftwood, Manatee Gray, and Hurricane Gray, which are those are a gradation, a gradation. Griffith's the lightest, manatees in the middle, and then hurricane gray. Um, I don't, I probably won't use all these, but I'm not quite sure yet. So I just want to have everything available. And then in my blues, I um, started at Yankee Blue, Bunker Hill, In the Navy, and Midnight Sky. And then I got out Stormy Seas, and I don't know how I'm going to incorporate that. And I also have out, um, this is a, a custom mix that I've used a few times, and I really like it, so I, I overmixed it. Um, but this has um, five shades of Dixie Belle in it. This is um, Bunker Hill Blue, Evergreen, um, Caviar, Peacock. I just kept mixing until I came up with a combo that I like. And I've used this blue several times and I like it. So. And Ginger says brushes in the fridge? Oh, brushes in the fridge. Yes, Ginger, you didn't know that? So anytime I know I'm going to come back to a piece, um, a brush can hold a lot of paint. So I don't rinse my brushes out. If I know I'm going to come back and do a second coat the following day, I will put my um, brush in a Ziploc storage bag and put it in my refrigerator overnight. And that way I don't have to rinse it out. Um, I don't have to waste the paint that's inside my brush. Um, and I can just come back and use it for the same color the next day. And then they rinse out fine. So um, storing in the refrigerator keeps that paint from drying on your brush. That is a great, great, great tip to know. So on this piece, um, I did a dark blue buffet not that long ago. Um, in fact, I've still got it over here. I, do you want a pan over here? I'll show just the corner of this because it's this one right here. So this is the buffet that this is going to go with. These are going in the same home to the same customer. So I don't want it to be matchy, but I want it to tie in that these could be in the same room together and make sense. So I'm going to use these blues, but I'm also going to incorporate grays. I'm going to have the same wood top and gold hardware. Um, so Ginger wants to know why, I mean, truly why in the fridge? Like, it basically keeps the paint from drying. Yeah, it keeps the paint from drying on your brush. Basically preserves it for the next day so you can use it without having to rinse it out. Just rinsing it out, I mean, if you think about how much paint comes out of a brush... Um, so every time you rinse it, your brush has to soak up that much more paint again to use it the next time. So um, I will just keep it, and it saves, saves paint, and the refrigerator keeps my brush moist, keeps it from drying out overnight. Um, so I'm starting out on the top here with driftwood. Um, you guys, the other thing 
I'm noticing is um because I've been out here working today, the viscosity of my paints are different in the cold. So that's always something to consider when you're working is um everything has a different viscosity. I'm in California, so I'm used to everything having a very low viscosity. Um, you know, my paints are thinner and easier to work with, and I've noticed they're they're just thicker right now. It's a cold weather. Um, I'm painting with my drawers in tonight. Normally, when I'm doing a blended finish, I will um, blend across the front, and then I take my drawers out, and I touch up around all my edges. So just like what, I, what I'm doing here, I'm gonna touch up around all the edges. See, I have the benefit of watching these conversations transpire. <laughs> when Avery says, Brandy, you're so lucky to have a supportive husband. Yes, oh, that's, that's true. Yeah, Mine just rolls his eyes. You guys are gonna fill his. You guys See, I roll my eyes, eyes, but it's behind the camera, so yeah. it's okay. <laughs> he loves it. He loves it, you guys. Um, you know, honestly, it's kind of funny because my husband is totally the people person. He's the, like, you know, could sell ice to an Eskimo type. Everybody, he gets along with everyone. And I'm the quiet, conservative, like, sit in the corner of the room and don't talk one. So it's funny that I'm on camera and he's behind the camera. He really should be out here. If he knew how to paint anything, I'd put him on. So back to business. Lisa <laughs> wants to know as far as a base coat. Did you use a base coat? Yes. I'm sorry. Thank you, Lisa. I got distracted and then I forgot. Um, so this piece I have cleaned well with white lightning, Dixie Bell White Lightning, which is a granulated product. I put it into a spray bottle of water and I spray it and scrub it with a steel wool pad. And then I come back with um, water and I rinse that solution off. So it's nice and clean. And then I use, um, it has a coat of Dixie Belle Boss in clear. So Boss is um, Dixie Belle stain blocking primer. I used it on this piece because it's mahogany and it's notorious for bleeding through paint. Even if you're using darker colors, you don't want to get bleed through because on a dark blue, it can turn your dark blue into a shade of green almost. Um, so even with dark colors, you still want to be priming for possible um, bleed through. Mahogany is notorious for bleeding. So most of your pieces you can look at and know if it's going to be a bleeder. If not, when you're cleaning, a good way to tell is if your piece keeps wiping dirty, you've cleaned that piece and scrubbed it. No matter how many times you keep wiping, it, your rag is dirty. You know, I'll show you, for example, you know, you keep wiping and your rag is dirty every time you know that it's bleed through. Your piece isn't dirty anymore. You're, it's the tannins from the wood that are seeping out. So I know this type of wood is notorious for bleeding. I just want to prevent it and I use Dixie Belle Boss. I chose the clear, it comes in clear and white and I chose the clear because I'm going to lightly distress this and I don't want the white to peek through around the edges. So this dries clear, you can't even tell that it's on there but I have protected this from um, possible bleed through. Great question. Thank you, because I almost forgot to talk about that. So how many coats do you actually apply on that? Um, I usually do two. Um, it really depends on the piece, but two is usually sufficient to um, prevent any bleed through. It also blocks odors, so if you have a piece that has an odor problem, you know, it came from a house with cigarette smoke or something like that, um, Dixie Bell blocks, blocks, blocks odors and um, stains. Um, it will also keep, you know, ink stains and things like that from bleeding through your paint. So Laura wants to know what spray bottle you're using. And then also, Lynn wants to know, why did you use steel wool? Doesn't it open it up for more bleed through? Um, it can. I don't, I use a very fine steel wool, so I'm not, it's not to the extent that I'm uh, opening up the existing clear coat, because yes, that would lead to more bleed through. You want to leave your piece sealed. Um, so it's a very fine steel wool and I use that just because I'm trying to, um, I really want to get any oils that might be on there. I want to lodge them free, um, you know. So so I use that just as a, a cleaning method, but I'm not actually trying to disturb the existing finish. My spray mister, these are in my Amazon shop. I'll post, um, but these are about $10. It's a hairstylist mister off Amazon. and. They distribute a fine mist of water versus a spray bottle that gives you a heavier mist. So, and then what's the crazy concoction you got in there? In here? In your spray bottle. Just water. Just water. So my crazy concoction is... <laughs> H2O. Tap water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the... <laughs> I'm tired. 
telling you guys he should be in front of the camera. And then as far as the uh, the piece, do you always paint with the drawers in? No, I don't. Well, when I'm blending, I do. Um, if I'm doing a solid color finish, I will take my drawers out. There's a couple of reasons. I see this all the time. People wonder, well, why are you painting with it in on camera? It's really hard to paint a drawer out on camera because you have to get the camera angle right to be able to show your drawer front. So number one, it's just easier on camera for the dresser to hold it for you so you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, but number two, I'm going to be blending paint colors down the front of this and I want them to be seamless. And if I take my drawers out, I'm going to have seams in it. So I will take this out after I'm done. I'm careful to make sure I'm not painting my drawers shut. So you can see I opened it to make sure that this isn't sticking because I can see right here it's got a close connection. Um, and I don't want to paint my drawers shut. So no, I don't normally, but for this purpose, it makes the most sense. So I'm starting out with Dixie Belle Driftwood. This is just going to be my light color. It, I'm, um, keeping it up on the top here, it probably will not stay this far up, but I'm going to blend some colors up into it. This is going to evolve. It's a process. I don't always know, you know, when I look at a piece exactly how it's going to look when it's done. So you guys are going to see, this might change from what I do tonight to, um, you know, I'll probably come back on like the Chalk Mineral Enthusiast group or my own page tomorrow and put the second coat on this. Refined by Design says, that. of course you're blending. Yeah, of course. <laughs> What, Hashtag wanna, blend like brandy. People don't want to watch me do anything else. <laughs> I just have to accept that. And what brush are you using? I'm using my Dixie Bell brushes, and my favorite of the Dixie Bell brushes for laying paint on is hands down the mini. So the mini is a two inch um, flat brush. Here's a dry one or a clean one. That is a mini. I love these brushes. I said this on my last live. Um, but if I were to compare these to some of my older brushes, they start gathering paint down here that just doesn't clean out over time. These clean fabulously. Um, they're a synthetic bristle brush with nylon and polyester bristles. And what, what, what I go to with that is we recently shopped for carpet, okay? And um, nylon carpet is known to clean better than polyester carpet. Um, so the nylon bristles in there are, I attribute that they help the brush clean so much better than just a straight polyester bristle. So they really did, Dixie Bell really did a nice job of making these specifically for um, chalk paint. So hmm. I just introduced Yankee Blue and I don't really like this. So, so Sheila asked a question, do yeah. you plan on paper what colors you're going to use? Nope. I know, I know a lot of artists do sample boards. I've never in my life done a sample board. I don't okay. know the meaning of it. Um, I don't do sample boards and I just go for it. It's just paint. Um, this is just my first coat. This is where my concept really comes to life. And if I don't like it, I just, um, like here, I'm kind of struggling with what color to go. I just introduced Yankee Blue. It turned purple, you guys. So that is an absolute no. I'm gonna have to fix that. So while you're doing that really quick, yeah. uh, Angela wants to know what uh, what that scooter is that you're riding around on. Oh my on. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so this seat that I sit on. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, this chair. Um, it's a mechanic stool. So picture it being like this and how it had a post going in between here. It broke, like my chair broke. And so my husband unscrewed the post off of here and I set the seat on. And I use this for painting down low, and then I have a non-broken one for painting, you know, up high. So can you? Oh, there we go. Out. Getting it on camera. Getting the whole thing on camera. The whole thing. Like because that. yeah. Oh, I could. Can you pick it up? It. Yeah. There like you that. go. And the so, base as well. So, oh, the base. So this part's kind of heavy. It yeah. Just has wheels on it. So this would have been a mechanic stool. So I don't know how I would advocate this, but it's really like a poorly assembled mechanic stool. If you want to get one and just use it improperly, but I don't advocate that, of course. So Linda says she can't find your affiliate to Amazon. Um, my affiliate link for Dixie Belle is in this post, and my Amazon shop, I will post a link to when I get off. Okay, so I'm gonna fix this here. 
I introduced Yankee Blue and it turned purple and I don't like, I don't, I'm not going for purple. So now I know Yankee Blue is not gonna work in this mix. I'm just gonna go right over it. I'm using um, Manatee Gray now. So this was Driftwood. So now I'm gonna use Manatee, which is just a slightly darker shade. Lynn says that's a great idea. She's gonna have to get one. <laughs> okay, but if hey. you hurt yourself on it, don't come tell me like I hurt myself on my half broken stool. MacGyver lives on. You gotta yeah. make things. Um, I was so bummed when it broke, like thought I had lost my stool, and it actually worked out to be a blessing because now I use it probably more as a broken stool than I did when it was fully functional. So I'm gonna keep my paint wet. It's drying a little bit because I'm getting a little chatty. Sorry, guys. I, need, I, I normally should be working a little bit faster. Um, I'm a hinge painter. A lot of people are not hinge painters. The reason I paint my hinges is because if I take these doors off, number one, I can't match the finish. Number two, they never hang right the next time. Um, so this piece here, I don't want to be... So Georgia asked if it's cold here, and I got to mention that I know we started it off saying it was cold and it's about 48 degrees, but there was a, a lady from Saskatchewan that said it was minus 12. <laughs> okay, you win. Yeah. All right, I get it. Don't be whiners from California. It's cold in California terms. In the rest of the world, no, it's probably, this is probably bathing suit weather. But I'm cold, I'm tired of being cold. <laughs> I wanna go inside. Um, so this piece, I don't want it to be a straight ombre. I'm not doing an ombre. I'm gonna blend maybe more grays here and it'll go to more blues or, you know, it's gonna evolve. Um, I'm using my same brush that I used for the Manatee Gray and I'm introducing a little bit of Gravel Road just to darken it up. This is my first coat. So this is just where my concept's gonna come alive. I'll get my colors figured out. And then for my second coat, I'll come back and duplicate it, but I'll have a more firm plan in place. Right now, my plan is, um, I don't know, I'm not sure. I'm gonna see what, what colors I like as I go. Um, I think we kind of struck a nerve as far as complaining uh -oh. about the cold. Oh man, come on guys, <laughs> cut me a break. Now let's go Oh no, everybody's chiming in, letting you know it's freezing there. And... Yeah, I mean, it's cold everywhere, so. I mean, it's... Never mind, Texas was in the 70s today and it, yeah. Oh, yeah, Texas. We don't want to hear from you guys. I know. I got nothing to complain about. I don't even know what, you know. I'm native Californian, so I've lived here my whole life. This is all I know. You know, we go to Tahoe, and that's probably, like, the most adventurous we get. But I know. I know. Um, some of our friends just moved from California to North Dakota. And they're taking like ice skating lessons now. <laughs> um, no, I, I just don't like to be cold. That's all. So that was Bunker Hill Blue. I'm going to come in and introduce some in the navy down on the bottom. My lid is a little bit stuck. There we go. How was your guys Thanksgiving? Oh, you know what, you guys? I'm going to give away Dixie Bell paint tonight. I'm going to do a giveaway because I forgot last time. So Kathy wants to know, are you changing your brush with each color? No, I'm not. Um, on my next coat, I will be a little more precise with my brushes, but I'm not. I'm keeping the blues with the blues and the grays with the grays. And what color is that? This is in the navy. I just love the name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's so many jokes I can make with that. Yeah. I'll refrain. So this is in the Navy. So I got some Bunker Hill, and that's gonna go down to in the Navy. I'm gonna carry my in the Navy over here. I really like the Navy. Now do you wet each section before you paint it? No. My first coat, no I don't. My second coat, you'll notice I use a lot more water. My first coat, um, go, you know, when you put on a second coat of paint over over another coat of paint, it, um, chalk paint wants to stick to itself. So you don't get the same glide. My first coat glides on no problem on top of my surface, but that second coat really needs a lot more water to lubricate the existing paint on the surface. Okay. 
Okay, so this was the side I pictured kind of being more heavy on the grays. I'm going to get a little bit of Bunker Hill in here, and then I'm going to start working these together. So here where I want to work it together, I do want to keep my paint wet, so I did just add water. And I'm letting the blue and the gray come together. They're going to make whatever color they make together. You know, if you don't like the color they make when they start coming together, like for example, I didn't like the, um, the gray with the Yankee blue got a little purpley. So then I know that that is not a mix that I want to make on this piece. That was a little bit of gravel road I just introduced and I'm brushing it into the, um, in the navy. It's interesting to see what people notice. Tammy says she's glad that she's not the only one with paint on her boots. On her brown boots. Yes. These, I cringe every time. These, you guys, um, these are Ugg boots. And when I first got paint on them, I was devastated. And so I got another pair that's my nice pair. And these are my painting boots. And they are destroyed, but they keep me warm painting in the winter. Now, can you go back over the process from start to now? Like what you've done to this piece? For the process? Well. <laughs> my process is I'm winging it, guys. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, so I started out, I cleaned it really well with white lightning. Dixabel White Lightning is a cleaner. Um, and then I put a coat of Dixabel Boss on. Um, Boss is a stain blocking primer, stain and odor blocking primer. Um, and this is my first coat of paint. So all I've done from here is I cleaned, I put on my stain blocking primer, and now I am putting a base coat on. And then what do you plan on doing with the top? The top is going to be wood stain top because um, this is going in the same room as another piece I've already done. And that piece has a wood stain top. So this is going to match that. So now I've kind of got something going on here that I kind of like. So I'm going to leave it. Actually, I, I lied. I'm going to put a little more Bunker Hill blue because um, it could just be my, my um, camera light. But it looks a little purpley. So I want to make sure my blue stays true. Okay. So now it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just my base coat. This is really just where, you know, I'm conceptualizing. I can change it with my next coat if I wanted to change something. Um, actually, I'm having a thought right now. I have a piece that I need this to coordinate with, and that's where my, that's what, what I'm thinking. So I'm going to I want this to stay blue and it's looking purpley to me. So I'm letting these paint colors blend on my piece. Um, this is my custom mix of uh, five Dixie Bell colors that I blended into this blue. And then I'm going to bring back my brush for the gray, which now has blue on it. but. So this is um, Gravel Road. Okay. And then I like to take a totally dry brush. So this is a clean Dixie Bell brush. And I will come back and I will brush those together. And that, you know, kind of just erases any transition lines. This is just my base coat. So any transitions I will smooth up in my second coat. Right now I'm just trying to lay the paint on and, you know, figure my colors out and... So Karen my... chimed in and said she just had an aha moment watching yeah. you blend with your brush that you go in multiple directions. Yes. So it yes. avoids the lines. Good aha moment, yes. You know, I think sometimes you guys notice I, I do stuff I don't even notice I do. I try to analyze it so I can teach it, but sometimes I just... Um, Sometimes I just go <laughs> and I don't even realize what I'm doing. So thank you for pointing out stuff you notice. So now I'm going to come here and I'm going to carry the blues up a little higher um, in the middle. So this is my blended blue color. My paint's starting to set up here in the middle. I'm going to brush this into the bunker hill. Um, the piece I'm matching this with, I actually did with a sea sponge. So it's got a different kind of texture. And um, so I'm making them kind of match and coordinate with, with texture. 
Um, they'll have different textures, but in the same color tones. So just a different way to get matching pieces without them being totally matching. Hanging on a little bit more of my medium blue. Becky said she was so nervous to do blending until she started watching you. Oh, good. It, you know, that always makes me feel better that, that these videos are helpful, that you guys get something out of them. Sometimes I just feel like I'm on here talking to myself. Um, so I always, thank you. I always feel better to know that these are helpful for you guys. Um, so I'm going to come here and bring in some gravel rope. I've got my blues kind of coming up. This is my gravel robe, which is the gray. So I'm brushing these together. Like there's no trying to keep one from going into the other. I will come back and clean up all these transitions with my second coat. I'm really just trying to figure out the flow of it. And I like the gray coming down right here. I'm gonna get a little bit more gray paint. So I just kind of work a small section at a time. I'm not looking over there. I'm not thinking about over there. I will get to that when I get to that. You have a lot of ladies saying that they're going to start blending. Oh, good. Or try it. Yay. You guys share with me what you do. I'd love to see what everybody creates. And um, water is your friend when you're blending. You just want to keep your paint wet so it will keep moving. And then brush those colors together. So Laura wants to know how you know what colors blend well together. Is it just trial and error? Um, no, you can, you know, there is some trial and error to it. Like, for example, when I first came on, I, I tried using Yankee Blue with the gray, and it got purpley, so that was an error. Um, but you can look at the colors and see undertones, and what has um, similar undertones will blend well together. So, you know, in the navy, has, it, it gets a little purpley but it's got a little more gray in it. You want to look for things that are in the same color family um, that are tonal, different tones of the same color um, usually work really well. Midnight Sky is Dixie Belle's soft black, but it um, has blue undertones in it. So Midnight Sky, I like to blend when I'm using blues. I'm gonna come down here and darken up this bottom. My brush had some gray in it, so it's not so Caleb and Nancy want to know where you get your spray bottle from, and then obviously what the concoction is. It's just water. Just water in my spray bottle. I don't use, I know some people use like vinegar and things like that. I'm just using water. Um, water helps keep your paint from setting up, keeps your paint moist, so you can keep working it. Um, so that's all I'm doing. As long as you keep this paint wet, Dixie Belle has an amazing open time, you guys. If you don't appreciate Dixie Belle's open time, go try doing this with other paint brands and it's it, the results are completely different. And I guess as a little disclosure that as far as paint drying, we have off camera, but we have a heating unit <laughs> <I have laughs> because we're whining about how cold it is. Cold. It's better now because I've got the heater on. I'm going to come over to the other side of my piece. So I can see right here as I'm working this, I'm not going to worry about it right now because I've got paint on at least, but on my second coat, I want to make this transition a little bit smoother where that door and this um, drawer edge right here flow together a little bit better. But I'm not going to worry about it right now. This is just, I'm just trying to get my concept laid out. Um, so I'm going to do heavier blues. I'm working with um, Dixie Bell Midnight Sky right now, which is a... Um, it's a soft black, but it's got midnight blue undertones to it, so it works really well with the blues. Liliana says, her son says you're making a Dallas Cowboys piece, and there's a couple ladies that have been in here oh, talking about watching the Cowboys. I don't and, huh? know. Am I? Yeah, I guess it could be, huh, with their blue and silver. I'm not a sports fan, guys. Sorry. But yeah, I guess it could. I probably shouldn't tell my customer that. I don't know if he's a cowboy fan. You know how once you say something, you can't you can't go back and unsee that now. So Tina wants to know if it's harder to paint with it with the weather being so cold. The actual yes, paint. my paint is thicker. It's not um, gliding as smoothly. Yes, it's absolutely a factor. 
I like my paints to be a little bit warmer than they are right now. Um, absolutely. I also did some pieces earlier and they're still damp. They're, my paint's not drying right now. It's taking longer to dry. Um, so I'm trying not to block this, but I can't see. There's this hump in the middle here. So normally I'd be going back and forth across the center. I'm not going to go back and, and redo that other side now that I'm working this because I don't want to block this piece for you guys. So if it's a little funky right there, again, I can fix all these transitions with my second coat. I really am just trying to lay out what my pattern is going to be. Um, so I'm going to, I don't know, maybe carry the blues up in a diagonal. I don't know. What do you guys think? The matter, now just a just a generic question can everybody see this clear i just want to make sure because i know that the blending video i had some um, reception issues and my, it wasn't clear at all So don't think I'm crazy, you guys. When this piece is done and you actually see it, you know, kind of come to life, you'll, it, it'll make sense. Right now, it probably looks like, what the heck is she doing? Like a, a mess. But this is your time. Your first coat is your time to make a mess. To go and figure out. Um, Perfect. Thank you, ladies. Figure out your look and. I'm just smoothing this out. I do go back and I, um, you know, if I brush multiple directions, I will come back and clean it up so my brush strokes all end up facing the same direction. So that's one thing to be careful of is you don't want your brush strokes to be all over the place. Um, Marcy wants to know if you love your new space. I do. It's so much nicer, you guys. I used to be crammed in like a corner of my garage. You probably couldn't see it on camera, but I was like shoved in between my Christmas decorations and furniture storage. I just have so much more space out here. Um, I'm learning how to fill it rapidly. It's so much nicer when I go to go live, I don't have to clear out half the stuff in my garage just to make it semi-usable, you know, so you guys don't see what I'm, it's just so much nicer. Um, staging, I have my staging wall all set up. I used to drag out, you guys, a back and drag out the furniture pieces and pull them outside of my house and um gosh it's all just it's all just there it's all just set up and ready to use all the time I still don't have all my shelving out so I need to I need to work this gray a little bit more I think I want my dark gray to come up higher so like I said when I was laying this on it's all going to change as I keep going but you gotta start somewhere. So you just start putting a color on, and then as I don't like something, I just will change it. So take us back to how you prep the piece for a paint. Um, so prep on this one, this is ma mahogany buffet. So mahogany is notorious for bleeding. So I cleaned this well with Dixville White Lightning, and then I put a coat of Dixville Boss on here. Um, Boss is a stain and odor blocking primer, and um, that will keep the tannins in the wood can bleed through the paint because um, chalk paint is porous. So again, I can't see that other side and I can't go over there to work it. So I'm going to trust that it's okay. Um, so that Dixie Belle Boss will keep the, the red tannins from the mahogany wood from bleeding through my paint. Even though I'm using darker colors on part of this, it can turn blues into shades of green. You don't want bleed through even if you're using dark colors. Now I just want to throw a shout out to Amy. She said your husband must be a sweetie for letting you have the man cave. No, my husband's horrible. Um, I'm kidding. No, do you know the deal my husband got? Well, don't you share the deal he got. He totally worked one over on me is how I ended up with this space. Go ahead. So obviously the garage is much closer to the house yeah. for the engagement and interaction with the children. So... Let's forgo using the workshop that's a 30 by 30 structure, double car garage, what, 16 feet tall? Yeah. We can't touch that because, you know, when it's raining outside, like right now, 
then that, that would be an issue with rolling furniture around and you don't want to get anything wet and you know there's no heater out there yeah my husband's smart you guys he knew exactly what he was doing so he uh you know my business was growing as we were building the house and we talked about um, adding a space on into our house plans for me to accommodate you know my work so we ended up building a, a 30 by 30 separate building a whole nother building that's outside um it's detached but it's right across the driveway. I want to point out that it's very cold in there right now. Yeah, it is cold. It's insulated, but it, that building gets cold. So I'm home with my kids all the time, and working over there would just be really hard. So while it was said to be for my business, my husband ended up with a 30 by 30 workshop um, of storage, and that's that's his space now. That's a space. crap accumulator. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. It's um. So our story is, if you follow my page, we have been building a home. We're doing a lot of the work ourselves. We're living there now. Um, we just moved here about three months ago. And um, before we moved, we moved a lot of our belongings into that workshop. So right now we're in the process of clearing it out and putting it in the house. But right now it's just a giant junk pile. Um, it's just a mess in there. So eventually we'll get that all situated. This has been hard because I think people were like, oh, you moved to your new house. No, I didn't move to my new house. I moved into a construction site. We could not unpack. I still don't have any shelves in my closets. We just got cabinets a couple weeks ago. Um, I just unpacked my kitchen this week. So when did we start this project? When did we start building? Um, we broke ground in December of last year. Um, so we bought the lot two years ago and then we... <laughs> sorry Kim said she's make <laughs> you're making her nervous around that light colored piece the oh. one to the right <laughs> <laughs> I should be making myself nervous I touch uh, up way more pieces than I'd like to admit uh, yeah um, these are some absolutely pieces Kim. here that I'm storing I need to get them out of here because they're done okay so sorry you were talking about the pro the process um oh our home building process so um we bought the lot about two years ago we broke ground in december and sorry i'm trying to paint and talk at the same time i lose my train of thought a lot um we designed a house with an architect for our family so we got to design you know things for our kids and there's a bonus room upstairs um you know we split the master to one side of the house and the kids rooms on the other things like that and um we had a contractor build it to a shell to drywall and then we came in and took over and we were doing all of our tile work our cleaning our cabinets um this is my husband and i um flooring paint um light fixtures you know all that kind of stuff is what we're working on I don't know if we'll ever be done. Well, you're always done the day before you sell. Yeah, that's true. Or the day of. That was how our last house was. We, we fit, you know, once we went to list, we had, we went and wrapped up all the projects that had been sitting around for a decade. My paint's getting a little wet. Can you see this right here? My, my brush has started to drag. That's how you know that you need to keep your paint wet. And the water will keep it wet so you can keep it moving. Um, you know, like I said, try not to judge some of my transitions here because I'm really just trying to lay out my concept for the piece. Um, I don't want it to look really ombre, so I'm seeing that it kind of is. I probably am going to carry my blue up onto this side here because I don't want it to look ombre. I want it to look a little more free-flowing and um, smooth and... So it's that simple as when you see something you want to change, just stop the paint. I'm just going to get the corner of this drawer right here, and then I will come back with my gray and brush that blue back in. Um, you know, when I'm done with this tonight, I'll walk away from it and come back and, and step back and see if there's any changes I want to make. And my second coat is really where 
you know, that's where I'm committing to everything. Now, what are your thoughts on the sides of the piece? I will blend those two, so I'll turn it in a minute and do the sides. But I try to make it so this continues. You know, I'll probably continue the blue, but then come back into the gray over here. So um, I try to incorporate them into the front so that, you know, the same flow I have keeps going on to the side. And how many brushes do you have going on right now? Uh, 52. <laughs> I don't know. Um, one, two, three, four. I have four, and I still have one unused, and it's it's looking like it wants to be used. Six. So. Carry the one. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I'm gonna fix this up a little bit, and can, please don't judge this piece. I'll come back tomorrow and put on a second coat on. It. Um, I might even incorporate the sea sponge texture because that's what I did on the piece that I'm gonna match this to. So I'll come over here if I can. Have this on wheel dolly so I can move it around. Um, Terry mentioned she just, her and her daughter just purchased four pieces of furniture. They're going to refinish and try to flip. Congratulations, Terry. That's exciting. So good luck. You, you never forget how everything started. My first piece, I still, I like telling the story. It wasn't fun at the time, but um, we have a rental property and our tenants destroyed it. Previous and, tenants. Yeah, previous tenants. <laughs> Our tenants now are fantastic. And um, six dump loads full of stuff to take out of the house. And the um, state of California doesn't let you dispose of their stuff right away. You have to store it. So we ended up storing their stuff. Really quick, your furniture dollies. Is that on your uh, link? It's on my... It, um, so the link I have on this post is to my is my affiliate link for Dixie Bell. I'm going to put... Um, I'll come back and put on my Amazon shop link and that has all my favorite products in there um but it has these wheel dollies in there has all the um can i zoom in down to those dollies yeah i'm just impressed with those things they're just three wheel dollies because it, it doesn't matter the the leg for the most part they conform to yeah if you many have a, different styles you know, a french provincial piece that's got a long slender leg it'll sit in the center these have you know, the L-shaped legs on the corners and they're sitting in, in there. There are three wheels, um, so you can really get your piece in there. This is just a one-sided leg here and it sits on there. One thing I'll say about them is they do not work if you have any ridges in your in your flooring surface. They they will catch on. Um, so if you have the, the stress lines in your garage, yeah. it's gonna catch. Stress lines in concrete and your piece will wanna fall off of the furniture dollies. So if they work great for me because I've got a smooth surface out here. But when I didn't have a smooth surface, they were a nightmare because you spend the whole time just putting your piece back onto them and it falls off again. So now I'm bringing in some lighter blue that I don't really have on the front. I'm gonna change this a little bit. I also am having a hard time because I've got different lighting with my um, camera light on and it changes the colors of my paint a little bit. So I can't really tell sometimes until I turn my camera off, um, my camera lighting off, if the colors are working. Now someone asked, as far as those dollies, if they'll work on carpet. I Outdoor, I would guess, but as far as indoor, I mean, we haven't tried them. Yeah, I don't think I don't think they would. I really don't have any faith in them at all, except for on a totally smooth surface. So. Um, <laughs> Maybe it, uh, anyone else who has them can chime in on whether they've tried it on carpet, but I, for me, it was a nightmare to have them on anything that wasn't totally smooth. I don't. I never understand how people paint on their carpet either. I swear, if I painted on carpet, my whole house would look like tie dye. Like I would not be able to come home. Yeah, just, I would have to stay away. Just look at my flooring out here, and it's. Um, I, I mean, I have paint all over this floor already, and it's only. So we put this in a month ago, two oh, months two ago. Two months ago. Now, are you going to be staining the top of this? Yes. Um, I can't tilt it down. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah, let's see. I'll try to. Sorry, guys, if it gets a little shaky. Um, I stripped it down and I sanded it today. And normally I would stain before I started painting, but I ran out of time. Um, and I needed to go live tonight. So, yes. It's going to be a wood stain top. I am a fan of wood stain tops. I like the look of them. Painting tops bothers me because it's a large flat surface where you can really see 
you know, any brush strokes or whatever are going to really come out there. And just like wood stain, it brings out the wood of the piece, gives you a nice smooth top. So, I don't know. I mean, I'm just laying my paint on. I just want to see how this works together. Um, I like it. I feel like I need some more greens in my blue. So I might change some, you know, change that. And I might take the sea sponge that I took on the original piece and sea sponge in um, some color so I get kind of a similar look. But, so I just worked across that whole piece. It doesn't look good. It doesn't, it's not smooth and perfect, but I've got my colors all laid out. I can kind of see where I'm going. It gave me direction. That's what I'm doing in this step. I'm not trying to blend it perfectly. I'm just trying to lay the colors out. And then your second coat, you get good enough coverage with Dixieville that I can, you know, really refine this and make it look smooth and pretty um, how they look in the end. So, so just, now, sorry, no. what kind of stain are you going to use on the top? Um, so I use Minwax stain. Um, Minwax stain, well, um, Dixieville only has gel stains and then... Uh, they have voodoo gel stain, but I like a nice penetrating oil stain. Nothing soaks into wood and penetrates like a penetrating oil stain. So your uh, Verithane and Minwax are, are brands like that. I just like that they soak into the wood and give it a nice rich tone. So I know everybody's got a different opinion on, on wood stains, but that's, that's what I use. Um, so it's going to be a dark stain top. Here you can see I've gotten some paint on the edge and this is okay because I'll just come back with a piece of sandpaper and lightly sand this paint back off. Um, no harm done. Um, Once you stain it, are you going to treat it with anything? Yes, I will top coat it with Dixie Bell Top Coat. Whatever top coat I use on the body, I'll use on there. I think that one has um, satin top coat, so this will also have satin top coat. I'm matching this to another piece for the same customer. Now what I'm going to try to do is, forgive me, I'm going to try to zoom in so that you can Get a better shot. It, I mean, I, I guess it, this is a good time to see that it's not perfect right now. Yeah. I can see like this transition right here isn't great. You know, I got a brush stroke of blue here. So I'm just trying to lay out my colors, get my concept going. Where do I want it to flow, the pattern? Um, and, and that's really what I did. And then I'll come back with my second coat is where I'm going to really refine this. Um, I'll work just like I did tonight. I'll work one section at a time and move across my piece, um, you know, blending as I go. So I hope that was kind of helpful, guys. So I'm excited to show this to you. I will try to come on live tomorrow and show you my next coat, too. Probably on my page, though. So um, let's see. Oh, I need to do a giveaway. Oh my God. I'm forgetting the giveaways all the time. And that's the best part for you guys. Um, so you guys, giveaway. Um, I need you to have liked and shared this post. Come on and tell me you did. I'm going to give away some Dixie Bell paint. So I'm going to come over and read through and check out who's this been doing my what. Favorite. Yeah. Thanks. You guys could look at my, oh, see, I'm now I'm backed away from my piece and it looks hideous right now. Okay. I'm looking. Well, you guys keep commenting. I can't read anything. <laughs> Stop typing. Okay. Okay. You might have to read this back to me again. Teddy and comma Miles. Yep. Did I say that right? Teddy and comma. Are you on? No. Anyway, Teddy, you're the winner tonight. I've been forgetting the giveaways. I feel spacey, you guys. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get back in the flow, but it's rough. I'm building a house right now, and I'm spacey. So, Teddy, congratulations. Message me on my page at Brush by Brandy, and you want an 8 ounce of Dixie Bell paint. You get to choose your color. Um, I'm happy to help with some suggestions if you need them. I've got my favorites. Um, congratulations. And um, you guys, I'll be live on the Dixie Bell page every week in December. So I'll keep you guys posted. And I'll see you guys tomorrow on my page. I'll come back and do a second code on this. Have a good night.